I've always had a fascination for monsters and art and drawing and all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't until I was 18, um, I started at a Halloween company in Phoenix. It was owned by this gentleman by the name of Larry Liff. And he said, well, the only job I have is out on the production line. And so we went through these hallways and these, I'll never forget this, these two doors opened up and I swear I, I felt like Charlie from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It was a machine making the vampire blood, which I knew very well. You know, the plastic teeth and these eyeballs and all sorts of makeup effects and kits and I was just in heaven. So that's where I started. I started in, in the factory manufacturing the, the vampire blood and all the stuff that I used to buy as a kid, you know, to put on my face and, and uh, make up my friends. And Larry, you know, who's like my second father, was always kicking me out of the nest. He said, you've gone as far as you can here with me. I said, you need to be out there. So I moved to LA and got started working at the various uh, workshops working on some amazing films. I was working for my friend Howard Berger at a company called uh, K&B Effects. And Howard said, he said, I've got these friends from this place called New Zealand. They're coming out here because they want to recruit uh, some of you guys to take back to New Zealand to uh, work on a, a remake of King Kong. And I said, they're remaking King Kong? Really? I said, who's directing that? And he says, well, Peter Jackson. <laughs> Don't know Peter Jackson. Sorry, Peter. The day came when I met Richard and Tanya. I showed him my portfolio and, you know, we, we talked about all the different movies and things. And, and he says, look, you know, we, we love the stuff that you've done. Why don't you come out for three weeks, see how you like it. And if it doesn't work out, well, hey, you got a free trip to New Zealand. And I went to go work with uh, my friend Patrick Totopoulos on Godzilla. And it was towards the end of that that uh, Richard had called to tell me, he says, look, um, I'm really sorry, but um, King Kong has fallen over. The, the, the studio decided to pull the plug on it. but." You know, um, we've got another project we'd love to bring you out for. And already through the grapevine, I'd kind of heard murmurings of, of Lord of the Rings. And I, and I asked Richard, I said, is it, is it Lord of the Rings? And he says, I can't tell you. <laughs> I, said, I said, it is, isn't it? And he said, and of course, it turned out to be that. Came out here, you know, for the first time. It was just, it was incredible. It was a beautiful country. And, and their workshop was just incredible. It was massive. And the artwork was just unbelievable. It's stuff I'd never seen before. The styles and the looks of the creatures. It was just an, an incredible show to be on. And my journey to Weta Effects, uh, I'll never forget this because we had just finished doing a, a fake body of the actor Sean Bean who played Boromir. And Joe Letary, uh, who was a VFX supervisor on Lord of the Rings at the time, um, just came around the workshop just to have a nosy looking around and he saw the body that we did and he goes, wow, that looks so good. It's like, you know, he looks he looks alive. But he's, no, I mean, he's, he looks dead. He's, he is dead, but it looks so real. I said, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a lot of it is because of the material that we use, the silicone. And I explained because of the translucency and, and I explained my process that I airbrush it. And I think this little light bulb came on in his head. He says, you know, how would you like to learn some texture painting? And I remember asking Joe, I said, well, does that involve a computer? And he goes, yes. And I said, no. <laughs> I said, this is Joe. I said, look, I, I'm totally practical, uh, airbrush and all that kind of stuff. I said, look, I'm struggling with my email. Joe said, look, we'll get a computer put into your office and we'll even have a texture painter come over and teach you the basics. That's how uh, it kind of got started. And, you know, I, I really took a liking to the texture painting using my practical sense of making things and being able to incorporate that kind of stuff into the digital world. That's something I've always loved doing. So the creative art director is, is just that. It's being able to move or jump back and forth between the, the practical side of things and also the digital side of things. So that was my introduction to WetFX and it's still there now. I think some of the best career advice that I was probably given was to never give up, treat people the way that you want to be treated, and practice, practice, practice. Of course, talent and skill will help, but, but that personality and, and having, uh, having a love and care for people, I think will get you a, a long, long way. Ha, ha, ha.